the FBI told me something isn't right with his case. But they don't know what. They won't share any theories if they have them. The FBI said until they make a discovery, they're never going to know. Forest Phenomenon, where we're going to talk about cryptic, supernatural, and mysterious happenings in the American wilderness. I'm May. And I'm Carolina. And today we're going to be looking at the case of Tom Messick, who disappeared without a trace from the Lake George Forest in New York back in 2015. So let's talk about Thomas Messick Sr. So he was an ex paratrooper in the Army. He would camp regularly with his family. He loved to hunt, he loved to fish. He actually also taught a hunting and survival class, which, if you think about it, would make him a really good candidate for surviving, being lost in the woods, you know, because he has that experience of teaching others, therefore he should know how to do those things, right? If that's what he's teaching. Okay, but Thomas did only have one eye. His hearing was limited, and for his later years, he had to wear hearing aids. He also had a history of heart problems, and he recently battled shingles and almost didn't even go on this annual hunting trip. So I feel like there are a lot of things pointing to potential challenges that could have come up for him if he got lost or something were to happen. So let's talk about the date of the disappearance. So Messick went on a camping trip slash hunting trip with his senior friends that he has been hunting and camping with for like 55 years. So they're an older crowd, as well as three other younger guys that were with them. And they ended up going to Lake George Wild Forest, and that's where their campsite was. But they were actually going to Lily Pond to hunt for deer. It's important to note, this is the first time they had ever been hunting in this area. So how it was set up was they had the four senior men waiting for the three younger guys to drive the deer towards them and that is how they would hunt and it is also important to note that Tom was the furthest away from the lake. Right, so the hunting trip was only supposed to last two hours and for those two hours the watchers would be staying in the same place and not moving. So after those two hours it's 2 p.m. and everybody else is getting ready to go all back together but Tom never shows up to meet up with them. So they try contacting him on his walkie-talkie, no response, and they end up walking back over to where his designated spot was. Not only is he not there, but none of his belongings are there, not a trace of him. And then after about two and a half hours of searching for him on their own, they contacted forest rangers, and those guys came out, still couldn't find him, searched until midnight. Once it was dark, three members of the camp actually went back to Lily Pond. They got in their cars, they honked their horns, they fired their guns in the air, just in case if Tom Messick was out there, he could hear the shots, hear the horns, see the lights, and just like walk towards the car. But a formal search did begin November 16th, 2015. And then after that, there were weeks of volunteer search and still nothing. I feel like it's important to know also this is like the ideal setup for a missing person. Like having that quick of a response time. They had people out there night of. Yeah. They're almost are starting the next day. Like this is, they have every single step in place to like have a successful yeah, search. Yeah, and they covered a lot of ground too. Yeah, of like course. The, and the way they were doing it too. It's like they, they like, how, how do I explain it? Like a grid? They were keeping super careful track of every inch oh, that they, yeah that they searched and they put string to cut off each search area and made sure that they were literally getting every single inch of the search area. So if there was anything, they would they that should team have found, found it. it. Yeah. Yeah. They also had search dogs who That's right. didn't pick up any scent even of no. him. And like if he went in any direction, you would think there would be some scent. My only thing, just to not get like too skeptical, too crazy, he could have been taken the same way that he walked in, because I know they wouldn't think that that was suspicious if you know his traces, because he did walk into the forest about 40 yards, right? Uh -huh. So that could have been like the perfect out for if somebody did take him, kidnap him, whatever it may be. 
to just bring him out that same way, which would then lead them to the road and then off the road, you know? Okay. That's, so that's, that's smart. My, yeah, it does, it would make sense. Yeah. Okay. Still weird. Uh, and then our good old pals, the FBI showed up, which is kind of crazy to think about because they don't usually look into adult disappearances. Um, it's usually mostly like children disappearing or things like that. And then when, you know, they talk to the wife, they didn't really offer an explanation on the case or why they were there. They're just kind of like, this isn't looking good. And that's about it, nothing else. Um, and then I just still think it's so weird that they never found any trace of him. Like not even a, a candy wrapper or his rifle, his clothes, nothing. Yeah, it makes no sense that there was not even a trace of him. The New York Forest Rangers were in charge of this investigation. However, 10 days after Tom Messick's disappearance and that formal search began, a ton of rangers had to be pulled off that search because another elderly man went missing. So Fritz Strom was another elderly man who also went missing from his 150-acre property without a trace. His car was still there, his phone was still there, everything was in place except for it. Suspicious. And so once the rangers were pulled off of Messick's case, they searched 900 acres for Fritz and nothing was found. They used drones, they used helicopters, they even used underwater cameras and nothing so similar to Messick. Though there's no actual evidence for this, this is just like something that I've been thinking about, it seems like it could be likely that it was a kidnapping sort of situation because he wasn't too far off from the road. And searchers even looked off the side of the road because I think some people speculated that he might have gotten hit and then just been left. Nothing was found of him there. So in order for him to completely disappear, I feel like there could have maybe been somebody else involved who actually is responsible for taking all of his stuff and maybe putting it in their car and then maybe shutting their door, which could have accounted for the sound that the other hunter heard. I heard a strange noise in the woods, but I don't know what it was. Just a different noise from what I usually hear, you know? It'd be hard to explain because it was different. Something different that I'd never heard before in the woods. I just can't say what it was. One of the other hunters said that he heard a really strange noise, something that was super unfamiliar to him in the forest. And it sounded like it was coming from about 150 yards away towards the top of the hill. He even told the police this, but nobody really seemed to take it into account. Like they never asked him about it after which just seems so confusing because that kind of, at least to me, feels like it could be an important part of the case. Definitely could be an important part of the case, especially because the other hunters did say that they didn't hear any wildlife when they were there. Like, no chipmunks, no birds chirping. I mean, you hear birds chirping everywhere, and particularly in a national forest, a wild forest, you would expect to hear at least birds, and they didn't hear anything. Yeah. Which is a little suspicious. Super bizarre. We did note that when we were up there, it seemed to be devoid of wildlife. You know, we didn't see any squirrels, chipmunks, deer, or any signs of them. I thought it was strange. Like I said, we didn't see any signs of anything out there. To me, what like freaks me out about it is, he still talks about that noise to this day. And like, I think about, you know when you, when it, like a deja vu moment, like you hear something, you're like, oh, that reminds me of this. Like, I feel like if it was a car door and you would hear a car door, he'd be like, that sounds like that time when we lost Tom. See, he got kidnapped. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it would, that memory that has stuck with him for so long, if he would have heard a similar sound, he would have, I think he would know. I, know? yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. I do think it's weird. Also, I feel like that kind of just sounds like denial. Are you talking to me? No, to him, because listen, <laughs> in my head, if I wouldn't want it to be a kidnapping, so if it were me in that position, I would like, I, I, I don't think my brain maybe wouldn't make that connection because how that would be so hard to accept. That's, I don't know. That's a very good point. That's it's, a very good point. 
my thought with this is like, the FBI showing up to Tom Messick's case leads me to believe that this was some sort of pattern that they might have been tracking, especially when 10 days later, like 40 miles away, another elderly man goes missing. Same pattern. That just feels like it could be a serial killer thing. Because why else is the FBI there? But it's all weird. I feel like there's no clear cut answer for this and that's... It's so confusing. Aliens. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't even think it's aliens to be honest because I feel like it, cause it happened during the day, right? I don't think aliens come out during the day. I think it was just some like weird like... I, I saw a theory about there being like a portal because like the Northeast is like kind of sketch. Like there's a lot of things that happen specifically upstate New York. Notorious for weird Notorious. shit. Notorious. <laughs> I it wouldn't put it past me that like there's some freaky, you know, paranormal thing going on up there. And you know what? Maybe it might, a lot of alien things happen over there too. You never know. But um, I'm leaning more towards it being paranormal, but not alien yet. Another creepy thing that kind of connects to that is like they didn't hear any wildlife at all. They didn't see any wildlife at all, which to one point, some people say that that's because there's a predator around. But other people, my people, say that it's like something supernatural around, like, oh, like a ghost or aliens or something, which, you know what, I wholeheartedly believe at this point. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that that stuff is fun to think about. But when I really, I think it's fun and interesting to, you know, speculate. But to me, it just, I don't know. I feel like there are enough things leading to something more logical than that. Like, in doing research, I mean, I saw a lot of theories about just him kind of getting lost because of all his health concerns. I mean, I get it. Maybe he couldn't hear them when they were mm -hmm. calling for him. Maybe he, something went wrong. He couldn't see what he was doing. He had a heart attack because of his heart problems. Any of that, I guess, it makes sense to me until I think about the fact that they would have found something. And you would think in a forested area, like, you would at least see, like, boot prints or maybe, like, someone, if someone got him, like, a snag of whatever he was wearing would be on a tree or I don't know, something like that. Or the his weapon? Or also the rifle. <laughs> yeah, this like, is, I don't, it makes literally no sense. Listen, I don't know much about guns, but I'm pretty sure a rifle is big, it's heavy, it's probably kind of clunky. Like, that just, y you know what I'm saying? Like, it would no. make noise, it would, and nothing. Also, if he had a gun, you would think if there was anybody else involved, like, he would, would he not be able to protect himself? Maybe not shoot them, but like, you know, hit him with the back. I've seen that in movies when they just hit him with the end of the rifle, yeah. you know? Like something. something. He's so experienced. <laughs> I just, I feel like he would be prepared for anything, but allegedly not. I read a theory, heard a theory where someone was like, maybe someone snuck up behind him and like hit his head and took him. And I like that, but at the same time, I think about, you know, if you get hit in the back of the head, mind you, he's old, like, you would get like blood drawn from your head, yeah, right? Yeah. And we're, this case was in 2015? 2015. This case was in 2015. DNA technology is so far advanced. Yeah. It's always ever evolving. And 2015 is not that long ago. Yeah, so definitely. they would have found something. And the fact that they didn't find anything just kind of freaks me out. Thanks so much for watching. There have been a lot of missing person cases in the American wilderness, but this one was especially strange. Mm -hmm. What do you think happened? Leave a comment below with your theory and any other cases you'd like us to cover. And remember, stay on the trail. Good night. <laughs>